Hey everybody, so story time again. You know, it's a new week, new story, all that kind of good stuff. So it's story time with Nan. Here we go. Um, the story for this week is about authenticity, okay? And not authenticity as in how, you know, your boy Webster explains it, but how it is in a biblical sense. Because there's a true difference, you know, like today I was sitting there listening to on the, I was listening to something. And I overheard them saying that Webster was adding more words to the dictionary. Why? Why? <laughs> I don't even know. I don't know what they're adding. And people say because times are changing and you just add more. But the Bible, we're not adding or taking away. So I'm going to go with authenticity or being authentic as in being true um as in real because sometimes when we think of authenticity we think of the original the first one like people in my hometown you guys will be familiar with um what's that place called um oh and it's up mm, so you might hear Addie in the background but the babe what are those places what is that place called where they have like several of them you know it's like the little mexican restaurant and you know not here but back home what is that restaurant called El, El Lugar, right? So anyways, it's like the original. Like when we think of authentic, we think of the original, the first one, um, that sort of thing versus authenticity um, as in being true, um, being real, um, things like that. Some people may beg to differ, but each was on. Webster has his definition. The Holy Bible has theirs. So I'm just saying, I'm, this story is kind of based on the biblical um, sense of being authentic. Um, being like true to oneself in a sense. So the story is from Acts chapter 5 verses 25 through 32. Nan personally think we could have went a little bit before and a little bit after. But anywho, I'm not on that committee. But when I see him, I'm going to let him know. All right. So the story goes basically the apostles um, are this. No, no, no. Let me back up. So this guy comes and he's like, hey. Y'all know them dudes y'all locked up? Yeah, they out. Like, they out there in the street. They talking about that Jesus dude y'all was talking about. That y'all told him not to talk about? Yeah, they out, they out there talking about Jesus. So, the guards and the captain, and I think it says it's guards or something or whatever, you know, depending on the, um, the version you read, says that they go out. And basically, they, they get them and they're, they're very cautious when they're getting them because apparently... Peter and them, the apostles, got a whole posse out there. Like, apparently, it must be like, you know, they got the whole crewmate G out there. Everybody, like, hyping them up and everything. And so, they real nervous to go in and get them because they're afraid that they're going to be stoned. Okay? Um, we don't really have any authority that are afraid to go in places like that anymore. Unless it's like that guy, you know, that's shooting their head in Dallas or whatever. And the officers were afraid to go in the building. Or, I'm sorry, remember... That one situation that just happened where, you know, there were some guards or something, I believe, in the recent incidents and yet they didn't go in. But anywho, moving along. So they're afraid to come in to get them, but they go in and they carefully bring them back to, to this to this guy. So they're like, they're being, you know, going to go like to court, like not like traffic court, not like your municipal court, like they got a traffic ticket. But this is in a time to where like talking about Jesus could have got you killed, you know, like Jesus, right? So they bring them back or whatever, you know, and the guy's like, hey, I told y'all not to teach in that name, you know, and they're basically looking like, yeah, you know, Peter's like, yeah, me and my boys heard you, but see the way my God is set up, he just got a little bit higher authority than you, and I'm not listening to a human versus God, you know what I mean? It's like, it's not even really a comparison, so, and the point of it is that you guys don't want us to talk about him, but yet y'all know Y'all know Jesus came, God sent him to us, y'all killed him, hung him on the cross. And so now, you know, he's been, you know, he died, rose, and has been exalted basically to be the prince and the savior, you know, um, for us all. And that's pretty much where the story goes and saying that, you know, basically in a roundabout way, that's like, yeah, I heard what you said, but my God told me to do something different. And that's what they're going to do. And so they were basically being true to themselves, being true to the mission. Um, I Oh, gosh, I wish I could think of it. But um, Pastor Matt is always talking about um, the Great Commission. You know, we all have this Great Commission to go out and make disciples of disciples. And it comes out of the book of Matthew. But that that's our Great Commission. So that's what these disciples are doing. And so this story kind of gave me a couple of, you know, a couple of different thoughts here. So like for one, I remember when I was a kid, 
Well, I'm going to say I was a kid because my mama said you could kid until you grown enough, take care of yourself, pay your own bills, stay in your own house, pay your own light bill. So I'm going to say I was a kid. But I was about 18, 19 years old and I had started college and met some friends or whatever, you know, and I think I had either visited a church with them or something like that. And so I go to my mom and I'm telling her like, yeah, my, I'm leaving the family church, right? <laughs> and my mom is looking at me like, you going to do what? And I'm like, yeah, my, cause God not in that church. And my mother literally, if you know her, she went in on your girl all the way. Pig did not reserve, hold back, nor filter that tongue on me. And she literally was like, what do you mean? What kind of church are you going to? What did folks tell you over at that church? And I was like, you know, at the time I didn't really know what I was saying, but I was trying to say to her is that mom, my spirit isn't being fed here, you know, but I kept on saying to her, my God, not here. I know he never church house cause he there, but he not in this one. This church is dead. And what it was is that it wasn't spiritually feeding me, but, um, not to be petty Pete, but you left shortly after me. I'm just going to throw that one out there. Just out there to see. So maybe you figured it was dead as a donut too. I'm just kidding. I don't know why you left, but I know why I left. But anywho. So in a sense, you know, me staying true to who I was and what I felt that I needed and what I knew, because the thing that was urging me that was making me want to move was the spirit of God. I just didn't know that's what it was at that time, you know, and at this point, I'm going up against my mother, who is the authority. My mother is the law. I don't need Tyler PD or even in this case, Harris County PD on me. I got pig PD. So for me to go and tell her this, like, you know, these disciples knowing that they're telling the story, they could be killed. Them telling the story of Jesus and about his crucifixion, they could be murdered at any time, just as Jesus was. Here I am telling my mother, yeah, this family church thing, this ain't working out for you, girl. Like, it's not literally, you know, you know how your mama tell you, I brought you into this world, I take you out, that type of thing. So I'm not saying I was like on edge like the disciples, that there was a life or death situation, but literally in my mind at 18, 19 years old, this was a life or death situation. And I had to stand firm in my truth and what I believed that was best for me. And I will be honest, I went on a couple of quests to a couple of churches um, or whatever. And that's, that's kind of my journey or whatever on that one. Um, but it's an, another a word I got out of that was, um, be authentic. A lot of times we are afraid to be authentic, to be true to ourselves. Like I was sharing, um, with, uh, my ladies, you know, friends on tonight, my sister this was sharing with my sisters that, um, you know, my tongue, my tongue, I'm telling you, which I also shared, um, with my other, um, friends as well. And in, in my other group, my tongue is so potent, it is so treacherous and, and that's the thing. And I literally believe that God sent me a message on the night that blessed me because I've been asking God to remove the profanity from my mouth. Like I'm not saying I walk around the house and I just swear all the time, but I'm kind of almost like, you know, a drug user or an alcoholic. Don't put me in the environment because I'm going to pick it up. You know, if I'm sitting in an, an area and there's a lot of swear words, cause your girl love little John and Eastside boys. I'm just saying, can't listen to them cause the kids are around. So the kids are really saving me, y'all. They really are. Um, but even like television shows, like I was sitting here watching the Chris Rock thing and I'm telling you, it was foul. It was good, but it was, it was very foul. And I can even notice like, I mean, I can go a day or I go a couple of days without swearing. You know what I mean? But it's like when I do. It's like, I go hard or go home. I'm serious. Like, and the thing is, is that God is now, um, using my voice, the same tongue to deliver his message. And I don't want to be the message just known. It's like, well, y'all know she be cussing. Cause you know how y'all do, you know, she, you know, she ain't as saved as she say she is. Yes, I am. And I don't really have a point to prove, but to be my authentic self. And so I'm literally being transparent with, with you all because some people know me and they know like oh yeah oh yeah we know you cuz you know what I mean but you don't know me as of today because you did then you would know that this is something I've cut back on and that I've been struggling with for a while and so I, I'm really trying to do this hype man for Jesus thing y'all I'm really trying to hype up his word but this lady said to me on tonight she said something to me and it moved my spirit and reminded me of the scripture that says you have not because you ask not and if you ask and you still don't have basically you have because you asked the wrong intent I haven't asked God my father to remove it because I don't like that he sees me do this or I don't like that he knows it but I want him to remove it because I don't want you all the public to judge me and and tonight the lady basically served me a cup of tea and was like who are they basically like she said well you want it because you don't want other people to look at you and you don't want to know what they think about you and I said that's it 
I didn't know that's what it was, but that was it. And I've been praying and I've been asking God to remove this, but not for him, but for you all who mean absolutely nothing. Like, if you know me, you know, like I recycle, like for real, when it comes to people like you in my life, you in it, you not, you not, I'm okay. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm alone. I'm, you know, I, I just play by myself as a kid. Closest sister to me is six years. So I ain't have a lot of friends growing up and stuff, you know, as far as siblings. So I'm used to being by myself. My mama come home. Hey, y'all go to y'all room. I go to mine. So I'm okay with being by myself. But I want to do God's work. I want to be a part of that great um, commission that, you know, the great mission that uh, Pastor Matt talks about. Like, I want to be out there in the vineyards and I want to be working and I want to continue vlogging. I want to continue, you know, blessing people and encouraging people. But I got to be authentic with myself. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't want other But that part of me, I got to be real and say, man. That is a part of you. You know what I mean? Until you ask him to sincerely and genuinely move that from you, you're going to keep it, boo. So part of me, I'm going to be honest, which be real, real. Part of me don't want to give it up because sometimes I get the inner spirit of Bernie Mac and I just want to let it loose. And, you know, most of the movies that I want to watch sometimes that I can't watch because my kids is always up. Can't watch because they got the swear words in them. I got to cut back on the swear words. I really do. And I know that's like a little extra, but that's just me being authentic, me being just open. But we have to be true to ourselves and we can't lie to ourselves about why we do something. I mean, it's great to lie to other people. You know what I mean? I'm not saying like, let's go lie to everybody. But when you start lying to yourself and believing your own lies, that's when it really becomes a problem. So these disciples, just to tie it all back in, like regardless of the fact that they knew that they could be killed, <laughs> That, that this could epically go wrong, they stayed true in who they were and told the high authority. Like, I'm not talking about like, again, your municipal court. I'm talking about like the Supreme Court, our day and age. Like, y'all about to get hung like your boy Jesus did. You keep on playing with us because I don't told you. Don't be talking about your boy Jesus and trying to put his blood on our hands, boo, because that ain't what we did, you know? And they like, mm, the lie to take the test determined. That was a lie. Like old Maury. <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, I just encourage each of you to be authentic, to be yourself. Um, more, more importantly, be comfortable being you and completely accepting all of you, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And truthfully, ask God um, with great intentions, something that that's going to benefit his kingdom. You know, because me personally, I'm so worried about the fact like, oh yeah, I'm vlogging and I'm doing a Christian thing. Oh, what if somebody hear me cuss? And? As long as I'm not getting big mad like Jesus, like God, I mean, I'm sorry. But as long as I ain't getting big mad like God, I, I think I'm going to be okay. And I'm a work in progress. And and I just hope that this story blesses you guys. I hope it encourages your day. And um, I don't know. It was good to me. It was because, you know, your girl is all about the truth. I'm all about authenticity. But your girl got issues, right? And I need to stand firm in my truth and just let y'all know your girl tongue, you know, my videos. Like, I'm just like, if I could do this thing and just like cuss all the time, oh yeah, I'd be dropping videos like left and right. But um, because that's my comfort, you know, just in reality. Um, but to just speak and be me, that's not my comfort zone, but God is making it to become. And so I'm going to receive that and accept that and then rephrase it and restate that prayer so it can get up on the prayer list on next week. You guys have a blessed day. Be encouraged. Stay faithful and share the story with somebody. Bye-bye.